number one since 1998 on television, ESPN Radio, and the World Wide Web. This is the Pro Wrestling Report with your hosts, the man they call Meathead, Frank Cosentino, and Damian Nelson. Professional wrestling news, opinion, and information from fans for fans. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Interactive. Thank you for tuning in wherever you may be all over the world. Damian Nelson sitting alongside the man they call Meathead. And let's get right to it. This show, all about your emails and your questions and comments. And the first one up today comes from Belmont, North Carolina. Adam Lindsay sends this in. He says, I just want to say, start off by saying I love the show. Listen to it and watch it every week. Thank you very much for that. Uh, quick question about Edge. It seems to me that people don't know how to perceive him anymore. Everyone goes nuts when he attacks a heel, but there are still boos in the crowd when he enters. As an Edge fan, I would like to see him as more of a face, but my question is, where is he at the moment? Who's booing? Adam seems to perceive that people are. No, and since Edge has returned, no one's booing, at least in my opinion. No one's booing him. I mean, again, this is something that's been talked about over and over, that when a big name, you know, uh, a familiar name, a star in your mind returns. He's going to come back and he's going to be, you know, exciting to everybody. Hey, look who's back. It's Edge. I'm happy Edge is back. I recognize him. Day. Edge. Edge. No, nobody's booing him right now. I mean, it may be a small smattering of boos, but... All right. Adam Lindsay, thank you very much for that email from Belmont, North Carolina. Let's go now to Hamas Dermick. Hamas? Harris, actually. Dermick. Who sends us in? So, it's been announced that this year's lockdown is going to be held at the Family Arena outside of St. Louis. I'm wondering uh, if uh, lockdown 2007 held in that same arena got about 6,000 fans. What do you think this year's lockdown will get? A bit of a loaded question, difficult to answer, but you got to imagine based off of TNA's live event business since the change of January 4th, that's going to be a number equal, if not more than that. Exactly. That will be coming off the heels of... Uh, the move to Monday nights for TNA of uh, March 8th. So if last year's was what, 6,000? Mm -hmm. Heavy, uh, Heavily papered, I That's believe. That's an assumption. Uh, I assume. I say 6,426. Care to make that interesting? No, because dude, there's no way to get it right. Oh, uh, get less, less papered, but still papered. I mean, it's it's a business. Decision. I think they're going to do everything in their power with to that fill being the one of the few events that they're going to do on the road. Do everything in their power to get that building filled uh, because that's I tell you what, what they if you do. pay for Damien, Meathead, and Dave Hero's uh, gas or airfare. I'm unable to attend, unfortunately. I have a prior engagement that day. Uh, but Take care thing, of the though. airfare. Think of it in your hometown, wherever you may be. If you hear Hulk Hogan's coming to a show on a card and you can get tickets for $5, $10, $15, whatever it Five. may be, $5 Hogan, um, you're probably going to go. So I think that factor will play heavily into the overall ticket sales for that event lockdown from TNA. Thank you, Harris, for that email. Now let's go to a uh, person by the name of Ant who says, out of the two February pay-per-views, I enjoyed Against All Odds a whole lot more than the Elimination Chamber. I personally felt that Chamber was just plain dull, except for the actual Chamber matches, but they weren't as good as last year's. WWE has lost some good momentum for, uh, towards WrestleMania, while TNA has gained a nice chunk towards lockdown, especially with the announcement of their move to Monday nights permanently. Do you think, as both big pay-per-views are just a month and a half away, Will WWE figure out a way to gain the attention of the fans to buy WrestleMania 26? And will TNA use their new home on Monday nights to get ready for what is now expected to be their biggest pay-per-view buy and crowd at lockdown? That's a really heavy question. It's a lot in there. Basically, the genesis of it is, do you think... Haha, <laughs> pun intended. Do you think that WWE is going to get enough momentum to make WrestleMania 26 I successful? I don't think WWE... TNA do the same thing? I don't think WWE has lost momentum. I mean, it's the build to WrestleMania. Here, the night after the Elimination Chamber, how many matches got set that night? At uh, least many. three. At least three. The two World Championship matchups, the uh, HBK Taker career and uh, streak match as well. All set up at uh, Money in the Bank uh, was yep. also confirmed. So yep. that's four matches already that are set for you know their monumental pay per view, their you know number one pay per view of the year. So I don't think they've lost any momentum. It may seem that. Again, Elimination Chamber was not one of my favorite pay-per-views, with the exception of, you know, 
Uh, the surprise with Vince coming out with Batista and running over Super Cena. You mean to tell me Cena was champion for five minutes? Five. Um, other than that, there really wasn't that much of a surprise. Even Frank Costantino predicted the Shawn cause. Michaels underneath the Elimination Chamber. You know? Yeah, I'm a little upset with the cause. He, uh, it is he missed what it, blocked me. He, it is what it is. Uh, thank you for that email uh, about uh, WWE and TNA. The other part of it, uh, will TNA do it? I think that they've done it already by making sure lockdown was, this is a pun, I guess, in the sights of the prior, prior pay-per-views, including Against All Odds. Everything was building towards lockdown. So uh, Destination you X know, is in the middle. It's the road bump to lockdown. <laughs> it's like No Way Out Elimination Chamber is the road bump to WrestleMania. You know, it's, it's funny that you say that because uh, it seems like right now TNA is building in four-month increments. Mm-hmm. And that's not too bad because, you know, that's something WWE doesn't talk about and not a lot of people talk about. They do build in four-month chunks. Even if you're supposed to be building from pay-per-view to pay-per-view, some of those do get stretched out. I mean, think about programs that run two, three months. You know, there's two, three pay-per-view matches in between. They used to build, say, from SummerSlam to Survivor Series. Sometimes Survivor Series to Royal Rumble, Survivor Series to WrestleMania, WrestleMania to SummerSlam. You know, the, you build in chunks. So... Again, thanks for that email. Uh, let's move on to our next email, which comes from Ian Black, who sends in the following. I uh, worry about WrestleMania this year, specifically the match between Undertaker and HPK. It was such an awesome match last year, as we as an audience will expect a better match. However, with Taker's knees and the different storyline, I don't think it will happen. I never wanted to leave, I never wanted to have the rematch so quickly and proves that WWE is about the ratings and dollars as the quality of the product will be affected. As well, why aren't the Hurt, why aren't the Hurt Foundation involved in the Brett versus Vince storyline? Or the Hurt Dynasty. It makes no sense to have them on SmackDown and not even acknowledge them in this storyline. That from Ian Black first wants to talk about HBK and the Here's Undertaker the at WrestleMania. We consistently hear talk about Undertaker's knees or Undertaker's back or Undertaker's, you know, scorched feet or, you know, whichever. The thing is, you know what? Forget that. Wipe it out of your mind. Be a wrestling fan. Understand that when it comes to WrestleMania 26, the Undertaker's going to deliver. No matter what his physical condition, he may deliver. Hell, the man got burned almost to the ground and he still wrestled. He may deliver emotionally, psychologically, but he's going to deliver for you. Shawn Michaels, you know, he's balding. It doesn't make a difference. He's going to deliver. You know what I'm saying? Do you understand hear, what I'm saying? I hear the words coming out of your mouth. And as it pertains to the Hart Dynasty, I too have struggled over that question. I don't understand why, and keep in mind, most of weeks where something could happen, I understand why they have not been mentioned or at least minimally involved or in the storyline. Or even story giving a rub in the story. You know, just involve the Hart Dynasty with Brett. Have them hanging out in the back. You know, stage area for 30 seconds. Yep. Acknowledge their existence. Thank you for that email, Ian Black. We appreciate you sending that in. Let's go to our final email of the day, which comes from Patricia, I'm sorry, Patrick Titta, who says, uh, Hey, I'm really confused. What's the deal with all these really lame WWE pay per view titles like Elimination Chamber, TLC, Hell in a Cell? Those are not suitable pay per view titles. What happened to the King of the Ring or SummerSlam? I mean, we want that familiar pay per view that we have come to love. And what's the deal with all these corny title belts? The whole stupid spinning belt, it's so sad. That's the spinning another belt's reason. been gone how many years now? The spinning belt's still used, it's just not done spin, it's still right. referred to as a spinning belt. Uh, and that's another reason why people don't like Cena, having belts like that make the whole, um, yeah, that page is next, make the whole uh, joke, whole title a joke. Remember how classy the older titles were? Uh, what do you guys think about Mike? Oh, okay, he goes on to ask about Mike Knox. But let's first address the pay-per-view titles. We learned that uh, several other pay-per-view titles have been changed. However, WWE has since retracted that public information about the title changes of the uh, summer pay-per-views. But at this point, they've shown better success with all but bragging rights that have been rebranded. So why wouldn't they? I'm kind of in. You know, I'm kind of indifferent about it. Um, to have. See, what it's done is, for example, Hell in a Cell. Does that mean now you can't use the Hell in a Cell match in any other pay-per-view because there's a pay-per-view called Hell in a Cell? But, I mean, the same argument could be given for Money in the Bank. They're supposed to be in a Money in the Bank pay-per-view, but they're doing the Money in the Bank at WrestleMania 26. 
And all they we know is that, that kind of pigeonholes you. All we know is that pay per view is titled Money in the Bank. Potentially, we don't know what it means. Uh, final part of that email says, "What do you guys think about Mike Knox? This is a guy that I'm blown away by. I think he could someday be an amazing champion. He's big. He's not pretty like everyone else. He even uh, he even works awesome with small people like Ray Mysterio." Here's the thing, Mike Knox needs to get all the birds that are nesting in his beard out of there. Thank you for that email, Patrick. Uh, Mike Knox, you know what? I, I've I have no interest. I don't in understand. Mike Knox, to be let me just put it that way. I don't understand. He's just sort of there when he's on. It's not something that keeps me tuned in. It's not something that tunes me out either. You know who he is? Snitsky, 2010. Hmm. Uh -huh. It wasn't his fault. Wait, or was that uh, Heidenreich? No, it was Snitsky. It wasn't his fault. Heidenreich was just... Hi, Den Reich. Yeah. Writing poetry. For Michael Cole. Thank you for those emails, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to today's edition of the Pro Wrestling Port Interactive. Uh, we'll be back with you again with another edition of Interactive soon. Check pwrshow.com for all the latest showtimes. For the man they call me, this is Damian Nelson. Say thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again soon.